will demonstrate the graphics package for data analysis. I will introduce some of the concepts that are basic to our package and illustrate them with a few examples. As yet, this work is at a preliminary stage. Therefore, I will emphasize how the statistical graphics may be organized using just simple examples, notably the scatter plot and box plot. However, we do hope that the same techniques could be used to construct more sophisticated plots for special purpose situations. As an example, we'll consider some demographic data. This data set consists of seven demographic and economic variants which have been measured on each of 49 countries. Here we have a list consisting of the seven variants that have been measured. One of them is the number of people per doctor, population per kilometer squared, infant death, and so on. Now, the items in this list are mouse sensitive, which we notice because they darken as we move the mouse cursor up and down. Depressing a button produces for us the following menu. And notice that above here we have some brief documentation giving us a little more information about what the operation entails. Clicking on Edit Notes, for instance, yields for us the following editor window where we get some additional information about this variant. Since this is an editor window, as we find out more information about the variant, we can simply add it in by typing in here. Similarly, we can produce a list consisting of one item for each of the countries that are in the data set. And again, the items in this list are mouse sensitive, and clicking gives us a menu of operations so we can zoom in and edit notes and so on for each of the countries. The countries and the variants that have been measured together form the data set, which in this case we call DEM data for short. We can zoom in on this data by clicking on the following menu, and that allows us to inspect the entire data set as follows. This menu consists of one item for each of the countries. These case objects on the right-hand side give us actual values for the variants that have been measured for, in this case, the country Puerto Rico. On this screen we see a window, a view window, showing a scatter plot of the demographic data. The scatter plot consists of components. There are components which are point symbols. Here we have one, another, and there are components which are labels. So here we can see that the variable on the x-axis is the gross national product per capita. And on the y-axis we have higher education. By clicking the mouse left button on each of these items, they become highlighted. Clicking them again, downlights them. Every time this occurs, a brief piece of information describing that uh, item appears in the plot window at the very top. So this highlight point here is actually a point symbol, and it views the case Canada. So we can see that Canada is quite high on gross national product and also does very well on education. We can click on this one here and find out that this is the United States. Similarly, by clicking on the label, you see this is a label object and it views the variant which is gross national product. There are special menus giving you lists of items that are appropriate for each kind of view. For instance, we can change the point size or change the drawing symbol for, for the case Canada. So here, let's make the point size larger. 
and we can change the drawing symbol too. So let's change it to fill circle. So now we have a fill circle here representing Canada. That just down this is again so you could actually see that it was a fill circle. Similarly, there are operations that are special for labels. So for instance, this is a pretty non-informative label here describing the scatter plot. So we can actually change that by clicking on this set text item here. So now it's asking us for a string. So let's say demographic data and see what happens. And sure enough, our label changes to demographic data. Once again, we can make the font larger if we want the title to stand out a little bit, or even larger. Okay, well, this piece of information is referring to this point symbol here, telling us that it's viewing uh, viewing the case Canada. Now we can also get menus that are appropriate for the viewed case and this, this time it's Canada. So here, well notice we're getting a little menu for the viewed object which is the same menu as we saw from the inspectors previously. So by inspecting here we get a little window which tells us the value for Canada for each one of seven variables. Just as we were able to form operations on a single case, we can also do similar operations on the whole set of points collectively. For instance, here we have a menu, and by selecting an item on this menu, we can change the drawing symbol all of the points. So let's change the drawing symbol for all of them to uh, triangles. So now each point is erasing itself and is redrawn. And notice still that we have Canada here, Oops. which still remains a bigger size. So at this point, when I click left, we get a brush which allows us to highlight groups of points as the brush is moved across. By changing an item on this menu, we can change the style of brushing. So here, we can change to sticky brushing. And that means, as we're told by this comment appearing here, that the brush will now do persistent highlighting. So for instance, when the brush appears here, now we've highlighted the points which have moderately high values of gross national product. So now let's suppose we want to make these points appear with a bigger point size and with a different symbol. Well, we can do that by going to the lower item in this menu, which is selected points. So we can first of all set the point size for these. And let's go to prompt for point size. So now we can make these really large. Let's give them a point size of four. So now they've got redrawn with a much bigger size. And we can change their drawing symbol to boxes. And then after all that, let's downlight them. So now we have a group of points here that are downlighted and larger. So this way, using highlighting and then changing symbols, we can separate groups of points quite easily. So let's summarize what we've just seen in this section. The plot and its components are views, and by views we mean they 
are graphical representations of some statistical data or viewed object. Secondly, the plots are highly interactive. We have seen how aspects of the views can be changed through interaction. Also, we can access the viewed objects through interaction. data has got in fact seven variants, we should look at more than one plot at a time. This is our original plot that we've seen a while ago. Now I've added another scatter plot. This one has the number of people per doctor on the y-axis and percent illiterate on the x-axis. If you look closely at both of these plots, you might notice that the plotting symbols appear to be the same. We have triangles in both and squares in both. In fact, these plots were constructed in a special way so that a particular case was viewed by the same point symbol in both plots. We can verify this by clicking on this point here and watching it highlight and downlight itself in both plots. Notice here is the point. Watch how it highlights and downlights itself as we click here. Let's just verify what happens when we set the point size. Okay, so we can put in a really big point size here to make it stick out. And we have this point here appearing quite large in both plots. Now our third plot, which is to the left, is a box, box plot of the variant infant death. And here we also have an extremely large triangle appearing. Therefore, our conclusion is that we have three plots and the cases are viewed by the identical point symbols in each plot. In fact, this particular case here is India. So it's India that's got such a high rate of infant death on this plot here. So let us summarize what we have just seen. A view can appear many times on the screen. In fact, as we saw with those point symbols, it can be part of many different views and those views could be of different types. So a direct consequence is linked plots. That is, plots that have components in common. Here we have our original plot of the demographic data. Now, let's suppose we want to construct a new scatter plot for this data. And let's construct a scatter plot that consists only of a subset of the points here. We can do this as follows. First, we pick some of the items in this plot that we want to appear in our new plot. We can do that by highlighting. Okay, so first we highlight the title, we highlight the Y variant, and we highlight the X variant. The next thing to do is to select a subset of points. And we can do that simply by brushing here. Okay, so now we've selected the title and two variants. We can go here and click on the menu for scatter plot and select the item spawn view. What Spawn View does is create us a new view of the same type, that is a scatter plot, consisting of the highlight objects in this first plot. So let's do that and see what happens. Okay, here we have our second plot, and as you can see, it's a view window, and some of the items are also highlighted. Okay, so actually we have the same title, 
appearing in both windows, the same variant, y variant appearing in both, and the same x variant. The same holds true for the points. You can downlight the points, and they'll downlight simultaneously in both windows. Finally, I will demonstrate how we can organize these plots, place them in the same window, change their layout, and so on. Here we have just one view window, and it contains two plots of the demographic data, two plots that we've already seen so far. Okay, now, this is a little small here. We noticed the axis looked a little crowded, so let's try and remove it. Okay, so we can erase it so that it no longer appears. Okay, that looks a little clean. Let's also erase this one. And for uniformity, let's erase the axis over here too. Okay, we can tidy this up a little bit by moving the labels. Okay, now we've got the title demographic data appearing twice, so we really don't need that. So let's first of all change it to something more accurate. So now let's take this box plot and move it in here to this window which contains our collection of plots. We can do this by clicking on the box plot and selecting copy. So now we just have to map out the area inside here which should contain the box plot. Sometime later, we have the box plot appearing here. Now, since I've copied the box plot, this is in fact the same box plot object. So when I click again, it appears highlighted in both windows. I will conclude by summarizing what we've seen so far. Graphics are views of objects. These views can be arbitrarily nested. Views may appear inside many other views, and views are highly interactive. 